Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY25 earnings conference call of the Karur Vaisya Bank. We have with us today the management team of KVB represented by Mr. Ramesh Babu, MD and CEO, Mr. Natarajan, Executive Director, Mr. Chandra Sekaran, Chief Operating Officer and Mr. Ramashankar, CFO. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. B. Ramesh Babu, Managing Director and CEO, to take us through the highlights of the quarter gone by, after which we will open the floor for questions. Over to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Sagar. Uh, good evening to all of you. On behalf of Karur Vaishya Bank, I welcome you all for our bank's earning call for quarter one of the financial year 2025. We trust that you, your colleagues and family members are keeping well and are in good health. We have uploaded our financial results along with the presentation on our website, and I hope you have had a chance to go through it in detail ahead of this call. Before I go into the numbers, let me begin with senior level changes happened during the quarter. Sri Natarajan, who was president of the bank, has been inducted in the board and designated as executive director. He will be overseeing all business verticals, including treasury operations. His quadrennial experience in various facets of banking would further shape our future growth. Mr. Dolphy Jost, Chief General Manager, looking after consumer banking, resigned during the month of June, and we have already recruited Mr. T.S. S.T. Gopal, who now heads liability business. Mr. Gopal has been a domain banker for 34 years and is in the liability acquisition business for more than 16 years. As indicated earlier, Mr. Nitin Rangasamy heads retail assets business, including open market channel, Earlier, he was handling the open market channel. Bank has now strong management team and business support and control functions are headed by seasoned executives. And bank had another strong quarter of performance built on our guidance on three metrics, growth, profitability, and asset quality. Bank's performance indicators are in line with our guidance and bank is seeing consistent and steady growth. It is encouraging to note our consistent and inclusive performance, highlighting a strong start to this financial year. The same will be continued, rather we will aim for further improvement of the performance in the ensuing quarters. The bank's total business stands at 1,70,059 crore as on 30th June 2024, we were able to sustain the growth impetus during the first quarter as our total business registered a growth of 4%. The advances stand at 77,710 crores and deposits grew to 92,349 crore with a growth of 4% each. We have been guiding in our earlier calls about our focus on inclusive growth from all verticals with respect to advances. I am pleased to share that the same is being sustained in RAM verticals with 6% quarter-on-quarter loan growth under the retail advances grew faster at 7% QOQ driven by growth in jewel loans, mortgages, and personal loans category. We have integrated our open market channel that is earlier we were calling as a NEO with our brand channel as a combined retail assets team from the beginning of the current year. The integration would help us to accelerate the growth in this segment. Commercial advances clocked 6% growth quarter on quarter and agricultural advances achieved a growth of 4% during the quarter. Corporate book has degrown by 2% during the quarter, mainly due to lower availment in certain seasonal sectors, lower disbursements and repayments, and of course, few accounts consciously we left to due to pricing. Deposits growth remains one of the key focus areas for the bank, and you are aware that bank had initiated various strategies for deposits growth, 
including establishment of sales acquisition channel for both term deposits and CASA growth. Our deposit growth was at 4% during the quarter and term deposits and CASA deposits have grown by 4% each. We have now revamped liability business model, particularly on the CASA. Besides creating exclusive acquisition channel, we have launched 24 new variants of CASA products. Further, we have created separate channels for corporate salary, institutional, NRE, government business, trade and forex, business correspondent, and we have recruited national sales managers from the market to manage this business. The last year trend of depletion in existing book on account of other opportunities available for the depositors is still being witnessed in the current year also. However, we are confident that our conscious efforts in improvement in our engagement with our customers supported by dedicated channels would result in stemming the above reduction. All of you are aware of the September 2023 Master Direction of Reserve Bank of India, wherein banks are to follow new regulatory guidelines on classification and valuation of investments effective from 1st April 2024. Accordingly, we have implemented the new guidelines and the transition is p &L neutral. The net positive impact on reserves is about 81 crore. We had indicated in the last call that NIM would be above 4% levels till first half of current year. I am happy to say that the NIM for the quarter is 4.13%. Our continued journey on shedding away low yielding corporate advances on one side and focused more on better yielding granular secured advances in RAM verticals. Both have helped us to retain about 4% NIM levels during the quarter. We are hopeful to continue our effort in maintaining the NIM above 4% for the next quarter too. The cost of deposits increased by 12 basis points sequentially and yield on advances by 2 basis points. Yield on investments increased by 12 basis points during the quarter. Based on our historical pattern of renewal of deposits and fresh deposit acquisition, we expect moderated raise in the cost of deposits by 12 to 15 basis points in the next quarter. Yield on advances expected to go up by 5 basis points and yield on investments <coughs> would be in the similar range for the first quarter. Considering all these factors, and without taking into any policy rate changes, we expect that the NIM will be above 4% in the next quarter, as I told earlier. We have achieved ROA of 1.7% in this quarter. We had guided that our effort would be to ensure ROA is always above 1.65 levels, and we are confident to maintain the same going forward also. Our gross slippages during the quarter continue to be under control at 174 crores, which is 0.22% on an annualized basis if we see, it comes to around 0.89% of the loan book. With our continued close monitoring of accounts, we are confident that we will continue to keep the ratio below 1% as guided in our earlier calls. Our efforts on recovery of technically written off accounts is continuing to yield results as we have recovered a sum of 101 crore during the quarter due to lower slippages, recoveries, upgrades, and write-off. Our gross NPA has come down to 1.32% and we expect that we will continue to maintain it below 2% levels. For the quarter under review, we have provided 100 crores towards NPA migrations and 33 crores towards standard assets and restructured prudential provisions aggregating 133 crores, which is 0.56% of our advances on an annualized basis. We estimate that the credit cost for the current year would be in the range of 75 basis points as guided earlier. Our net NPA has come down to 0.38% and we would continue to maintain net NPA at less than 1% of our loan book. Our standard restructured loan book is further reduced to 0.85% of our loan book and 
we hold a provision of 40% of the standard restructured book. Our establishment costs were 333 crores during the first quarter, which is within our guided range of 325 to 350 crore. Operating expenses were 333 crore, sequentially gone up by 4%. Our cost to income ratio is at 47.20, and we will continue our efforts to peg it to and now always to maintain within 50%. Our CRAR, Basel 3 continues to be healthy and is at 16.47, providing us comfortable headroom for growth. Our liquidity coverage ratio continues to be well above the regulatory requirement of 100%. Bank has added two branches during the current quarter. The setting up of the branches is under progress and the first set of such branches are expected to function from the beginning of the second half year. To end, keep moving ahead because action creates momentum, which in turn creates unanticipated opportunities. Nick, did you kick? Our endeavor is to keep, keep up the momentum created and we have started the year as planned. We are mindful of the challenges, particularly on the liability side and are taking every step to increase the low cost funds, which would also help us in improving the margins. I am grateful to all our investors, analysts, and stakeholders for the confidence and continued support, which we will reciprocate to our better performance in the days to come. Now, I'll be glad to respond to your question. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our first question is from the line of Jay Mundra from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, good evening, sir, and thanks for the opportunity. Um, and congratulations on our good numbers. <clears throat> Jay, two questions. First is, sir, on yield on advances. Right, so uh, we had increased NCLR at the beginning of the quarter. And I think we had also revised, uh, you know, repo rate link by five basis points. In this quarter, you know, a corporate book has actually degrown. Um, still, the yield on advances rises only two basis points. Uh, and I think in your opening remarks, you mentioned that it could be, it could rise by another five basis point. So just wanted to check, is there, uh, I mean, ideally the yield on advances should have risen a little bit more. So I, I was uh, hoping if you can provide some clarity here. Yeah, Jay, thank you. Thanks for the compliment, Jay. In fact, uh, if you need to look at it, there are a few more aspects here. MCLR, what all is there? Our total book is not on the MCLR. So around 40% book is covered under the MCLR. So that way, out of that, at the time of repricing only, you can pass on this, unlike uh, other things and all. So second thing, so there is some sort of a pressure in the pricing pressure from other competitors also. So wherever actually you need to retain a customer because for a long time they are there, if you need to look at the other value, so those cases you may have to give some sort of a concession. The aggregation of all these together and above all as you have also seen, the corporate actually, so few of the accounts where and we have this, we have degrown also. So that's why if you look at it overall, that five basis points, you may not be able to find straight away in the yield, but over a period of time, progressively it will start coming, though not now immediately in this quarter. Understood, understood. And secondly, sir, uh, there's a sharp growth in the dual loans and retail segment. Right? We have been looking to increase growth in uh, gold loan in retail category. Um, but this 24% POQ growth, uh, is there any you know, specific reason? Have we introduced a new product, a new geography, or you know, uh, what is giving uh, uh, such kind of a growth, uh, especially in this quarter? There are two things we need to see, Jay. 
the 24% number looks good, but you look at the base. Base amount, it is not on a 5,000, 6,000 crore base or 10,000 crore base, it is not there. Because the base is low, the percentage looks high, first thing. And second thing, yes, we consciously made some sort of efforts in this. Many of the customers with whom we were dealing actually, so on a win back, uh, we had a campaign wherein our branches started calling them and stating that this is what we can do. And we sort of streamlined our delivery numbers, what all is there. So with these things, we are able to see some sort of attraction this quarter under the GL loss. So some sort of a conscious effort has been made to win back the existing customers whom and currently they are not dealing with us. Two years, three years back, they were dealing with us. So this has to some extent supported us and in getting the growth. Product wise, more or less same product going on because our existing product is quite appealing. I tell you, Jay, in fact, the, the, the dual loan, other than the product and pricing, the major thing is the delivery. If some, someone comes, how fast you will be able to deliver? And the second thing is how fast you are going to release the, the ornament. Of, though both are important. So that we have focused on that. Our anyhow pricing is uh, quite competitive compared to the market, what all is there. So that's all factors together to support us in this quarter. Sure, sir, sure. And last uh, two uh, data questions, sir. Uh, one is if you can quantify the treasury gains in the total fee. I think you had already quantified a TW recovery at 101 crore. But what would be the treasury gains in the other income in this quarter? And if you have the number of staff, uh, outstanding staff count. Uh, no, no, it's not. As was mentioning, it's 11, 11 crores. Investment in trading profit is 11 crores uh, this year, this quarter. And the last, last quarter, it was 10 crore. March quarter was 10 and this now 11. The employee's number is 9403. Uh, but, okay. Jay, in fact, sure, another yeah. point we need to keep in mind. Jay, in fact, uh, D used to be 7,700, something like that. Right. But all plate whom we have taken, more or less majority are at the bottom. In the sense that they are the running sales team, who will be on the feet on street, those sort of things. So that way, overall, they will be adding value into the sales and growth over a period of time. So the higher level uh, taking the people is very few in this lot. And for all these people that we have added in the last 18 months, they are not on uh, IBA model, right? They, they are on CTC basis. Is, absolutely, is that, absolutely. Right? absolutely. And then, sir, on the total 9,400... Ah, yeah. continue, continue. No, on the total 9,400 people, uh, how much, how many would be, let's say, ballpark uh, IBA and CTC? Around 33% would be CTC and the uh, rest of the 67 will be IBA. Sure, sure. Thank you, sir. I'll come back in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prabal Gandhi from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, congratulations, sir. Can I audible? Yeah, audible, audible, Prabal. Please go ahead. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so my first question was on the MSME segment. We are seeing a growth of 22% here. And it seems that this is uh, largely driven by increase in ticket sizes. So how sustainable is this growth? And uh, have we tweaked any strategy to focus more on the on the higher end or larger ticket size customers within the MSME segment? Yeah, yeah. If, uh, there are a uh, few aspects, uh, probably. If you see, agreed, continuously we have been tracking the average ticket size. And uh, based on our past confidence, uh, higher tickets, the relaxations what we have given at the lower ticket, we try to pass on slightly to a higher level also. We have seen the checks and balances what we have got up to 50 lakhs. And the delinquency level is low. And these relaxations, if you give it to 75 lakhs, how it works. So that way we have experimented and we gave few of our relaxations that is working to some extent. And second thing, so the teams in the branches and others also, they started working well. And third thing, there was some demand due to that the availments also have gone up. So these three factors have helped us. So regarding the trend going to continue, I may not say that it is 20, 21%, but our efforts will continue. So, which may more or less yield our focus majority, first of all, if you look at it over a period of last three years, the commercial segment 
composition in the total advances has been going continuously up. The simple reason is that is a granular portfolio secured and better yielding for us out of all the verticals. That is the reason all branches, every resource is working on that. So we will try to maximize what best we can use that under the MSME segment. Okay, and when you shift from the 60 lakh to 75 lakh, it is the same customer who you are giving higher loans or it's the new customer? No, you, also, you also, earlier also, up to 50 lakhs, new customers we were doing. And those things actually, when we look at and back test, what is the stress we are getting out of that, what is the rating, all these things. So over a period of two to three years when we saw, so it is absolutely is it bearable. That sort of a risk is bearable. Having seen that we thought we can take some more risk with these sort of a relaxation, we have gone ahead in the last uh, six months. But once you do it, it's just like a engine straight away, it will not start. Slowly started working on this and all. So over a period of time, we will start seeing an average ticket size going up. But there are three combinations here. One is average ticket size. Second thing is the disbursements also have gone up fresh acquisition. And third thing, availments also have happened. It's a combination of all three have resulted in this growth. Uh, uh, and sir, uh, we, we, we are also seeing current deposits grow on a sequential basis in a, in a seasonally weak quarter. So is there some correlation of uh, maybe the MSME growth picking up for us and uh, we are also able to tap a uh, float for the customers? Uh, no, I cannot say that directly there is an effective linkage is there between these two. So these two are independent levers as it is. So that way, uh, tomorrow MSME growth may be there, current account may not be there. Because the reason is, many of them, they may not place their money in current account. So they are all absolutely conservative. They are conscious about the pricing. Instead of leaving the money in the current account, they may keep it in the cash rate account itself so that they will save the interest. So that way, I cannot say that current account growth will can be linked to the MSME growth. Uh, uh, and so secondly, uh... In the BNPL portfolio, we have been growing that portfolio, but this quarter, it seems that we have paused the growth in that portfolio. So, uh, any stress that you are seeing on the ground or maybe it's just the no. cautious call that you are taking? No, no, probably it is not the question of a cautious call or a strange. You see, we used to have around 350, 350 crores last March. And last year, Dashara as well as Diwali, so there was a huge demand from the Amazon customers. So that's how it has gone up to 1100 for something like that. So though we are trying to maintain in those levels, we will see it again the opportunity comes with Sachara Diwali. What best can be taken and all depending upon our risk appetite, we will try to do. Currently, if you look at it, the stress is under control. As we always told earlier also, we have an FLDG of 5%. So that way currently what all default or NPA is coming up, so all is covered under FLDG. So we, we are not out of pocket as far as the stress is concerned. So currently things, everything is going on well. Let us see when the next festival season comes, whether how much we can take, we will see, rather than overnight uh, opening the floodgates. And so far, as per your uh, monitoring systems, there seem yes. to be no challenges on this point. Yeah, 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 absolutely. As on date, everything is going on well. And as per the tolerance limits, what we have, for the stress, it is moving in those limits only. All right. Uh, sir, and last question was on the management bandwidth. So I understand that you have got a lot of people from outside at the senior level. Uh, but how are you grooming people at the second and the third layer? Because uh, eventually this also comes with a key man risk. We have seen that happen uh, in recent months that when a senior person leaves, uh, there is a risk that. Uh, the systems below it cannot work that efficiently. So how are you bringing the second and the third layer in order to make it more institutional? Yeah, we are quite mindful of the fact about the succession planning. So that's why every senior position, what all is there, we have a buffer for one or two people always under that. That is the reason any time, because someone leaving is not new to the bank, it has been happening, but we never had that shock any time in the last few years because the way we have groomed the people, uh, many of them, they can handle multiple tasks. They have expertise in different areas. And we have a concept of uh, rotating them in different verticals also. In addition to that, as you mentioned, institutionalizing this one. So we started providing them this institutional training also for developing their management capabilities. 
and uh, so they are effectively working as number two, number three. So that way we have an effective planning mechanism which uh, someone can take over seamlessly if there is a gap. Thank you, sir. That's for my question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rakesh Kumar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks a lot, sir, for the opportunity and uh, quite good set of numbers uh, in this quarter. So, so West had uh, a few questions uh, on this quarterly numbers. Uh, firstly, uh, so this, uh, like you, uh, you mentioned, this uh, the you know uh, the gain on the treasury book that is have, that have got rooted into the reserves that is 23 crore plus 58 crore that we have reversed. Uh, the depreciation of the previous uh, uh, previous year, previous quarter, correct, Mr. No, no. This, this is actually the this is the effective from 1st April and the transmission day on 1st April when we work out based on 31st March. This is the impact. 80, uh, the, the, whatever uh, you mentioned, the number that's got yeah. the result. And so the another number which has uh, like you know from the investment reserve that we have uh, you know uh, that we have also reverse this quarter. So if you can explain that number, sir, uh, uh, 203 crore, so which has like, you know, transferred from the investment reserve. So if you can elaborate on that, sir. Right. So yeah. uh, pertaining to the most two accounts, number two, sir. Yeah, yeah, I'll see if we respond to that. So two reserves, one is for investment fluctuation reserve, other is investment reserve. See, two percent of the... Uh, 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 average profit which we have to transfer it and uh, keep it under uh, investment fluctuation reserve. If that is adequately covered, the guidelines have been informed that the investment reserve can be shifted to, can be moved to uh, general reserve. That's what we have asked. So, uh, for, your, for your question, the net impact, net impact out of the entire guideline, whatever that 82.25 crores we have mentioned is the net impact. Correct. So this is 23 crore plus 58 crore, uh, regardless of the depreciation Correct. Correct. 81. That's what. That is, comes to 81. Yeah. The total impact is neutral because it moved, within the reserve and surplus, it has moved from investment reserve to general reserve. Correct. So this is investment reserve plus uh, investment surplus reserve. Both the reserves, uh, you know, of 203 crore shifted uh, transferred to the general reserve. Right. Investment fluctuation reserve stands as it is. There is no change in that. It remains as it is. Only yeah. the investment reserve has moved from investment reserve to general reserve within the reserves and surplus. So, which was 60 crore, uh, which was 60 crore uh, as on March 23. March 24 that's number that's we don't have. Fair value valuation, because of that the new direction uh, uh, that we have taken to general reserve, 60 crores. Okay, okay. Okay, sir. And, uh, sir, I also saw this. Uh, you know, the recovery rate that we have, you know, uh, we have seen in the slide number 21, that has improved uh, significantly. Like if we compare with uh, FI24 number and maybe, uh, you know, Q424 number. So so the recovery, what we are doing, uh, the provision right back that we are, we are doing on the recovery number, uh, that has improved. So would that... Uh, that kind of a number uh, pertaining to the figures there in the slide 21, sir? Now, Rakesh, in fact, the recovery, particularly from the return off and all, so we cannot give any guidance on that because it is dependent on many factors, external factors like courts, NCLT, auctions, these sort of things and all. But our effort we started having for more than two years and different stages, different cases which are stuck, slowly they are getting released. So our effort is to push each one of them as much as possible to get that. Correct, correct. Uh, sir, I was uh, referring to sir this recovery number, recovery and upgrade number of 90 crore, and uh -huh. against that provision right back of 56 crore. So, uh, so provision right back of 56 crore on 90 crore of recovery, I think that number comparable number for previous quarter and previous full year. There is a quite a lot of improvement that we have seen. Uh, so I was um, looking at that way, sir. Yeah, what your uh, observation is correct. Okay. 
and so thirdly sir investment yield numbers sir like i saw uh, you know there is an improvement so it is now 6.53 for this quarter and for march quarter it was 6.41 but if i look at the previous uh, quarter uh, uh, investment yield uh, which we had given it was slightly lower so uh, is there any revision for the march quarter investment yield numbers sir no oh, actually what happened last in march what happened was the ytd numbers were given See, the entire figures are given quarter wise okay june end of june quarter september quarter december quarter march 24 quarter okay the last uh, in march this thing it was given till june figure what is the uh, ytd till no, june no, march one was for the whole 12 months whereas up to december was only for the quarter oh, okay. so that's the reason because 12 months when it is equated so it has come to 6.41 okay now we are given quarter wise to have a uh, comparable at uh, For all quarters. And so, gross security receipts numbers are uh, in March 24 it was 378 crore, and now the gross security receipts number is 263 crore. So, uh, I couldn't understand, sir. If you can explain, sir. Sir, 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 sir. So, some recoveries have come already. Last month also, last quarter also, 354 crores recovery. You are able to see that. Uh, last March quarter we have a recovery. So the recoveries are coming in a surge. Uh, actually, I was thinking for so the closing figure of March uh, uh, and the opening figure of uh, uh, this uh, uh, this June. So uh, we don't have the you know moment of that number. So we can not. That was the. Sure. Moment chart. What all is there? Let us know. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, thank, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants: if you wish to join the question queue, please press star and one on your touchstone phone. The next question is from the line of Anand Dama from MK Global. Please go ahead. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for good set of results. Uh, so my first question is regarding the AFS result. Uh, creation that we have done during the current quarter. Uh, so, what is the uh, positive impact on the CT one during the quarter? This quarter, five. This quarter yeah. is five crores. Sorry, five, five crores is uh, the AFS result uh, for uh, this uh, this quarter. Whatever the gains under the AFS mm -hmm. portfolio, which was transferred to AF, AFS result, is five crores. So the CET one would have improved by five crores. Is that the way to look at it? And in that case, how much is in the basis point? Five crores and ten thousand crores. So very minuscule, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, so secondly, uh, uh, when we look at our basically uh, loan book, so two observations. One is that we are growing our lab book at a pretty faster pace. And uh, secondly, that we have also cut down our NBFC exposure uh, on a quarter and quarter basis. So, any comment about that? No, no. If you look at it, uh, the LTV, more or less, what we maintain for a home loan as well as lab, all of them, you are hundred percent secured. Then the options are different. Options are there. When you want to maximize the yield, the cost of deposits have gone up, and you want to maintain the margins. so we do not want to aggressively go into the unsecured because tomorrow something happens the first fall will be from the unsecured so that is the reason when we didn't go for that at least out of these products if you look at it so one is dual loan is giving more or less 9.5 10% something like that they are giving so fully back that's why we have focused on that and lap is also giving that 9.5 plus yield where you have full security is there for you and we are not relying only on the security here we are looking at the cash flows we are doing the assessment on those lines where we are thoroughly satisfied that uninterrupted cash flows are there so can service this loan then only we are going for the lab that's why when we have seen few years the stress levels under the lab is quite manageable that's why we thought saying that when the opportunity is there demand is there why can't we go for that now coming to the nbfc agree so we have reduced the portfolio there is a lot of scope available there and all because rbi guidelines have come up for the additional capital what we need to maintain and second thing suppose there is some sort of an issue automatically nbfcs will have an issue indirectly we will have the problem 
that is the reason we are relatively in a calibrated manner we have grown on nbfc and few the nbfc exposures we have brought it down so that's why a manageable level keeping our risk appetite in mind we are going in the nbfc not taking too big too many exposures on nbfc sure sir that's very helpful sir uh, one more thing is that uh, you know recently telangana government has announced the farm loan waiver uh, uh, do you see any so basically one is that how much is our portfolio in telangana okay and uh, do you see any impact of this farm loan waiver at least intermittently if you look at it uh, anand ji support our total agriculture even today 90% is dual loan so just dual loan is 90% so out of these uh, 18000 crore hardly less than 1800 crore in the whole country would be other than uh, dual loan so that is spread out many locations and many of these cases also absolutely either it is backed by security or cash flow these sort of things our clean loan of cash credit kisan credit card these sort of things are very low but one more thing we need to keep in mind even if we have a small portfolio in these states but it is a waiver when we talk about it government will pay the money and all they are not asking bank to bear the brunt so that way the question of we will get the money but there can be a small shift in the culture of the people for the repayment but we don't feel that sort of an issue agriculture so much of a deep penetrated uh, other than jewel loan portfolio is there in telangana for us it's a, it's a jewel basically is going to be a collateral for you right but it's correct correct much safer that to that you like you get to get the waiver you not going to pay right correct because you are not going to we will we will be releasing the gold only after we receive our dues only before that i cannot release it so my anyhow ltv 75% is there 25% even if fluctuations also i have the money with me so that way the worry should not be much because i have a backing here yeah. so what will happen is that if the customer the farmer doesn't pay it will slip into npa your provisioning will be lower because you have a security backing correct 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 provisioning in the sense that the entire amount i will be able to recover because if ltv is 125% then the problem is there So if I go and sell for sale, instead of suppose hundred rupees, I will be getting ninety rupees. And my outstanding is seventy five rupees. I will be able to recover my money and balance. I can return it to the customer. Okay, sure, sir. That's very helpful. Thanks, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Mahesh from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, hi, uh, good afternoon, sir. sir. Hello. Yes, sir. You like yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Mahesh, Mahesh, yeah, please go ahead. Hey. Sure. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, sir, just a couple of questions, sir. One, um, this I know it's a small number, but this still trying to analyze uh, this leakage that you are seeing on the retail side. Uh, is there any product segment which is contributing to it? Because it's been driving on a consistent basis in recent quarters. Hey, raising in the sense that you see, Mahesh. In fact, our total portfolio and retail unsecured is marginal, and rest of the product, what all is there, everything is backed by either a home loan or lap. These two are having comfortable security. Sometimes, what happens, you know, if you get these sort of slippages in the first and second quarter, it is relatively better for the bank. The reason is you will have enough time for enforcing the surface, getting it, and all. by the time third fourth quarter comes many of them the surface process is going on itself they'll come for a compromise and settle it so that way we encourage suppose a more or less here and there sort of an account is there instead of prolonging this pain it is better we bite the bullet and initiate the resolution process so that your ability to recover the money will be much faster so that way everything is backed by security it is a question of time we will be able to get So nothing much to worry about that. No unsecured portion much in this. Ah, oh, yeah, just wanted to confirm that. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's the so second question on the OPEX line, um, which, which is currently running at about uh, a little over twenty-five percent, the non-staff way. Right? Any direction as to how are you looking at that number? Oh, which which one is that? OPEX, sir. The uh, OPEX, the non-staff line. Non-staff. Non-staff. Uh, as earlier also I was guiding. So. 
normal course what all is there it will be growing just linked to the inflation but so we have planned for around 100 branches this year out of it 80 branches can be light and 20 branches can be normal branches which we want to open and these things are there naturally the overhead cost for these sort of things can go up but we need not do all those things but if you do not do it raising the liability getting the leads and many areas which is the suburb developing and all we will be missing the opportunities there. That is the reason what we thought, maybe it is better we bear the cost for one or two years. Then by the time one and a half years, two years, they get break even. But next 10 years, you will be able to reap the benefit of it. Other than that, routinely, if you look at it, normal OPEX is going on, no spikes will be there. If at all something is there, we may spend on IT, upgradation, these sort of things. And second thing is the branch openings and the cost for that. These are the issues only which can come up. Other than that, nothing much. So last question, um, as la in the last three quarters you reported 25% of floating provisions, whereas this quarter you reported under other prudential provisions. Is there any difference in these two? Well, it's a good question, Mahesh. In fact, I'll tell you, when we were commencing this particular uh, provisioning, we clearly mentioned that because at that time unknown unknown guidelines were there actually where we will be landing as far as the ECL is concerned. So we thought that let us provide something. When we have provided 100 crore, and the, and the calculations when we made, more or less the provision what we have made would be sufficient enough to take care of any shock if the RBA releases the guidelines. So that is the reason there is no point in bloating that particular provision 200 crores, 300 crores and all, it doesn't make any sense for us. So that is the reason we have shifted this side so that it can be helpful on the stress side. If at all tomorrow comes up, those things will be eventualities can be taken care of. That's it. Okay, that's Thank you, thank you. Thanks, Mahesh. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star N1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of uh, Nagesh Motamari, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening, Nagesh, sir. Please, how are you? Good? I'm good, thank you, sir. Please, please. Uh, congratulations for a good set of numbers. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to know why the tax provision has gone up, sir. For, uh, when the profit in the last quarter was 573, you have made 117 pro provision for tax. And this year it is uh, out of 612, 154 has been provided. That is one question. Okay. And, uh, secondly, uh, any expectations of bonus issue or something because there's a gap of about six years which you have done and very small bonus has been given in 2018, one is to ten. Uh, regarding the bonus issue, I'll tell you, currently there is no thinking as yet in the board also. So at the appropriate time, whenever the board feels we can think of, but currently we try to strengthen uh, the uh, capital is because the, the growth what all is coming so which requires some sort of a capital that's why we do not want to make any shift here and there currently so but as you mentioned that at the appropriate time when uh, the board feels uh, definitely we'll keep that particular point in mind sir coming to I the, the tax reserves have gone up uh, more than 10,000 crores for the first time I know I know I know you know I know sir I know but uh, you see the other side the retail growth is also going at 21 percent so there in the meanwhile, RBA has also increased the risk weight for the capital for many of the products and sectors. So these things, we need to take care of that. So we will gauge all these things and all, what a call has to be taken by the board. Appropriate call, we will take it, sir. We will keep the point in mind. Okay. Yeah. On the provision for taxation, I just want to clarify. See, the last year, in the beginning of first, uh, up to third quarter, we are not so clear on the amount of uh, what will be the IBA settlement, by product, how much amount, uh, though we are being providing it, whether only when it is paid before March or uh, when it is finalized, then only we can claim it as a reduction. A lot of unknown unknowns were there. So our provisions are, uh, uh, are around 25% plus on the for taxation. And when uh, March quarter, when you have the full year review, so whatever is uh, the provision, what we had made for the three quarters, and the balance figure for the taxation for the full year, was the second year. Yeah. Even if you see the first quarter also, the effective tax rate comes to around 25.2 percent, which is as per the tax rate. Okay. 
ओके सर थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सर ऑल द बेस्ट थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वी वुड टेक दैट एज अ लास्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर टुडे I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. B. Ramesh Babu, MD and CEO, for closing comments. Yeah, yeah. Thank you all uh, for your interest and for the participation and uh, serious questions you people ask, which are quite insightful. Thank you very much. As we assured earlier, we will strive to further and uh, show better results than what we have been doing, and uh, with the support and guidance and all of you. Thank you very much once again. Good day to all of you. thank you on behalf of karur vaishya bank that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us you may now disconnect your lines